state that we'll be recording this session for quality control purposes, as well as for those who aren't around, those that they can have access to the recordings. And the rules of the meeting are the same to mute the mics when you're not speaking and um, raise your hand using the options. Uh, if at the bottom of the screen, you can have the options to raise your hand and also the one for mute. So to commence, we'll have Chika share, oh sorry, introductions. So can you kindly um, have a brief introduction of everyone on the line? Uh, we can start with Chika. Okay, good afternoon all. My name is Chika Kole to Canada. Um, I'm an EPID analyst um, with Africa CDC. Um, stationed at um, the Southern RCC um, office. Thank you. Thank you, Chika. Uh, Nora? Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is uh, Nora Fere. I'm the quality officer from the National Microbiology Reference Laboratory in Zimbabwe. Bakari? Yeah, I'm Wahid Ario Bakari. I'm the IP, IPC focal point, uh, Africa CDC, RCC Zambia. Thank you. Okay. And? Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Ann Williams, Logistics and Procurement <laughs> Officer for Southern Africa RCC. Okay. Um, Sandra Machiri. Kindly unmute yourself and introduce yourself, please. Hello, Sandra, can you hear us? Okay, we'll get back to Sandra. So Humphrey. Could you introduce yourself, please? Okay. Is also quiet. Uh, Tivani Moz, could you unmute yourself and introduce yourself, please? Can you hear me? Yes, yes, and I can hear you. Okay, so. Um, there is Sandra, there is Tivani, and there is, uh, okay, uh, Tivani, yes, your hand is raised. Um, can you unmute yourself and introduce yourself? There's a button with the microphone, click on that and you can uh, mute yourself and introduce yourself. Or if you're having challenges, yeah, we can hear you. Oh, wow, your network is really bad. I'm a Tiffany from Mozambique. I'm a laboratorian and coordinating the uh, yes, I'm uh, whole thing. Uh, um, um, okay. Um, uh, uh, coordinating, co coordinating the. Okay. Hello, could you hear me? Yeah, it's, it's really bad. The network that we could barely hear you, it was breaking very badly. But um, I got that you are you a laboratorian and from Mozambique. Well, you can use a chat function to type. Um, the, when you click the three dots, there's a chat function there where you can type your um your credentials your name and uh, where you're from 
because your network is, is really bad. It could barely hear you. So is there anyone else on the call that hasn't introduced? Uh, oh, there is a Simba Chiwanda. Could you unmute yourself and introduce yourself, please? Okay, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, my name is Simba Chiwanda uh, from Zimbabwe. We are part of the nine uh, volunteers that have been recruited to support the Minister of Health in the COVID response. Thank you. Oh, that's great. Great to have you here. Is uh, okay, Sandra. We still can't um, hear Sandra. So uh, while we wait for more people, we will uh, proceed to the events of uh, today, starting with the epidemiological updates from Africa CDC. Okay, uh, Sir Humphrey. Oh, okay. My my name is uh, Humphrey. I'm the, the lab lead for the Southern RCC. Okay, great. Great to have you on the call, uh, Mr. Humphrey. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, uh, Chika, could you kindly take us through the the presentation? Okay. Um, thank you, Isani. Um, good afternoon or good day, all. This afternoon, I'll take you through the epi epidemiological um, updates. Okay. Please, next slide. Okay. So globally, over 7 million cases and over 400,000 um, related deaths have been reported from over 200 countries and territories. Please, the next slide. So um, in Africa, we have exceeded um, over 200,000 cases, over 5,000 deaths, and over 90,000 recoveries from the 54 member states. Also, we can see from the EPID curve on the top left, showing the seven-day moving average that the epidemic is still showing an increasing trend. So you um, can see the map of Africa showing the countries, affected countries in Africa. Next slide, please. So this table shows the cases, deaths, and recoveries reported in the continent as well as across the regions as of today. Over, over 5,700 new cases were reported um, as such from yesterday till now, and um, with over half of this being reported from the Northern and Southern region. So the Northern region is still reporting the highest um, cases and it has the highest CFR. So you can see the Northern um, region has 58,000, over 58,000, and then um, the Southern close to um, 56,000 of um, um, total cases, but the highest CFR is from the Northern region. Is the next slide. So here, the, the graph shows the cumulative testing in all um, African Union member states. Over 2.9 million tests has been conducted across the continents, which gives about um, 1,982 tests per million population with a positivity rate of 7%. In terms of the rate of tests per million population in member states, the minimum of four in Western Sahara, a maximum is um, over 35,000. Um, Djibouti, um, Djibouti is um, are, are one of the countries testing more. However, the overall positivity rate has gone up, so there is need to increase um, testing. Please, the next slide. So um, here in the Southern region, we have South Africa, Zimbabwe, and Mozambique as um, the top um, reporting countries. Um, last week, it was um, Eswatini that was on the list, but now Mozambique has joined the, the top um, reporting um, Southern reg uh, region. And um, South Africa, which has reported 
over 35,000 cases, accounting for about 94% of the cases in the region, is showing a steady upward incline. So uh, I think that's all from the EPID um, update. Thank you. Over to you, Raising Me. Okay, thank you very much, um, Chika, for the update. So um, in addition to that, we also just want to highlight a couple of resources and support that Africa CDC um, has for member states and also for the continent. Um, so for the resources and support that Africa CDC has, in addition to the specific ones that give the countries based on um, requests, we have, um, we produce weekly briefs, um, scientific updates and policy updates that cover new guidelines, not just from Africa CDC, but from um, WHO, from um, uh, US CDC, from Public Health England, research findings, clinical trials, as we continue to learn more about um, COVID-19. And these are published uh, every Tuesday on our website. And you can get access to these documents. Uh, the website is uh, www.africacdc.org. And then we have weekly webinars that uh, tell a lot to African context. Um, and these webinars um, are on IPC, on surveillance, on case management, on communication. And these are every week. They have their particular days, and I'll, I'll talk about that much later. Then we've also established communities of practice, which are like virtual spaces where um, um, different um, experts across the continent can discuss issues on COVID-19. Uh, we have for case management, we have for IPC, we also have one for communication. And these are all, like I said, I will talk about uh, these and we can also share the links with you uh, much later. And then we are also giving in-country training and support based on requests from countries. And we are really encouraging countries to articulate uh, their needs and um, channel it through the right um, source um, process and um, they'll get a response. And then we just uh, recently launched the PACT initiative. I'll talk about this much later as well. Like I also mentioned earlier, we have resources, um, guidelines, advisories, position statements, and these are available on the resource um, tab on our website. So, so uh, like I mentioned, we have um, weekly webinars. The one for IPC is every Wednesday by 12. We have both um, in English and in French for the French speakers. And um, so and these, you can also receive slides and recordings of these after the webinars. And these are held by experts from the continent and they, they discuss these issues um, within the African context. And then the one for case management is every Thursday. Um, and they also hold office hours where they have um, specialists come and discuss different issues on case management of um, COVID-19. That of the laboratory is on Tuesdays at that time. Then for surveillance, uh, we have uh, webinars for surveillance on every Wednesday as well and um, Friday for the French, and that's the link. I will share this uh, slides with us after the, the, on Slack. We can have access to these and then we can disseminate widely to our, our colleagues. Then for the PACT, um, last week, Thursday, Africa CDC rolled out, because we had earlier launched this, but we rolled out the PACT, which is a partnership to accelerate COVID-19 testing in Africa. And this is uh, a continental strategy that has three components, test, trace, trace and, and treat. And um, you can get more information on PACT from our website and how you can tap into this. So the idea is to test, um, test be able to identify test, uh, to test, sorry, testing to diagnose cases, tracing to identify cases and their contacts, and treating. So more information on PACT can be gotten from our website and I'll advise you to please go to the website to get all the information on PACT and you can um, then see how your country can benefit from this. So uh, we, are, we have targets that we hope to meet as a continental body to be able to achieve this in the shortest time as possible. So that's it for the presentation. 
So is there any question? We have more people who have joined us now. Um, Juliet, could you kindly introduce yourself? Namibia, Juliet Carroll. Hello. Hello. Um, we can hear you. Oh, she she muted herself again. Okay. 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 Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes, I can hear you. Okay. I I was saying I'm Juliet Karirao. I work for the Ministry of Health and Social Services in Namibia. I'm also the Africa CDC focal person. Okay. Thank uh, you. Apologies for joining joining a bit late. I was in another meeting. Okay. Welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, there is thank Dorothy. You. Dorothy, could you introduce yourself? Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Dorothy here, um, African Union. Um, glad to be part of the session today. And apologies to I joined later. I had another meeting that extended. Okay, thank you very much, Dorothy. Uh, Mazianga Zambia, could you kindly introduce yourself? Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Mazianga. I work for the Zambia National Public Health Institute, um, heading the Communication Information and Research Cluster. But I also support the Southern Africa RCC um, as focal point. Thank you very much. Then we have um, Sandra. I'm sorry. Sorry, sorry, Ezine. Um, let me introduce my colleagues okay. in, in, in the I have um, Dr. Msonda, Kunda Msonda, who is head um, lab systems and networks under the Zambia National Public Health Institute. Um, I also have uh, Dr. Kayei, uh, Komba Kayei, who is um, our consultant in um, uh, surveillance and um, um, IDSR uh, um, uh, platform for surveillance. Then I also have um, uh, Dr. Simwawa, David Simwawa, who is our public health specialist um, at national level. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Mazianka. Um, Yaya, could you introduce yourself? OK. Uh, Hello, yeah, good, yeah. Afternoon, colleagues. good afternoon, colleagues. Uh, I am Yaya uh, with the South Africa RCC, currently uh, part of the team that is supporting Cameroon for COVID-19. Thank you. Thank you very much, Yaya. Thank you for joining us. And with me here is uh, Dr. Nyambi. Please, could you introduce yourself? Hey, greetings, everyone. This is Dr. Nyambi, Head of Workforce Development at ZNBHI. So thank you very much, um, everyone, for the introductions. So do we have any questions on the presentation, the epidemiological um, presentation, and also the, the very brief one on the resources that are available from Africa CDC to countries? Any questions? Hello. <laughs> yes. Hello. Yes. Is Abdur speaking again? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. My co my question is as like a curiosity, is regarded to the northern northern region, where countries like Egypt, uh, or those that uh, have have been uh, reporting cases from from so long, and uh, I'm I'm looking at that on a epidemiological manner where it were may be supposed to, according to the trend they may have uploaded before, maybe people being, many people being affected were supposed to be declining. And what will be this? For that still having um, Tivani, apologies, but I couldn't hear the last part of your question. Could you type it in the chat box? 
we could hear the beginning okay but okay okay i'll do that and, yes please could you just type your question in the chat function um any of our question comments and okay. we can move up to updates from countries okay. if uh, we don't have any other questions or comments or clarification then we can move on to updates from countries so like uh, we've been doing for the last couple of weeks almost months now um, trying to get um, challenges and um, experiences from countries so we just want um, to go around and um, have countries speak about the the gaps the have the challenges they have and um, the way that they um, I mean ask questions or support that you can uh, get that can help them to um, address these challenges or gaps so I'll start with um, Zimbabwe to just give us a brief update on the situation. Of, so from, from each person we want an update, a brief update on the situation in the country, the challenges and, and how best you think we can work as a region to overcome these challenges. So uh, Zimbabwe, Nora, we have, um, we have Nora and um, we also have two other people from Zimbabwe. Could you please, um, Give us some updates from Zimbabwe. Uh, thank you, Ezine. So uh, Zimbabwe currently is um, active uh, COVID-9 cases, uh, like we all probably know. Uh, in terms of response activities, all the response pillars are active and um, working to control the, the pandemic. Uh, as of uh, yesterday, we had a total of 314 uh, cases, um, 46 recovered, and then 264 uh, active cases. In terms of the number of uh, daily positives, this has been uh, steadily increasing in the last uh, couple of weeks, and uh, mostly driven by um, returnees from the neighboring uh, countries that are coming back. In terms of um, the challenges, our biggest one still remains uh, the capacity for testing. We do have a larger footprint of uh, PCR testing equipment uh, from the other programs that have been running. Uh, but the main limiting factor has been the reagents themselves. So we do have um, abort machines that could potentially be used for these. Uh, we haven't had any reagents for, for, for Abbott, for example, and then for the ones that have been uh, coming in, we also haven't uh, had uh, like large numbers of reagents, so that's the, I think, the main challenge that we, we are having. But um, we, we do have a larger PCR footprint, and uh, the country could do more in terms of uh, pushing volumes for testing are uh, provided uh, reagents uh, were available. Okay. I think. Yeah. So Simba and Sandra, do you want to chip in? Thank you very much, Nora. So Sandra and Simba from Zimbabwe as well, you're part of the team, uh, the Africa CDC volunteers in Zimbabwe. Do you want to add anything to what Nora has said? Okay, thank you. I think Nora has pretty much summed it up, but maybe one important issue or challenge that we might want to highlight is the issue of the returnees. You find that of uh, reported 314 uh, cases, 276 uh, returnees from um, mainly South Africa. And then our biggest challenge now is to see if one, if they are, are they coming with the, the condition from South Africa or they're getting uh, infected maybe in transit because apparently they're just being shipped together in buses. Uh, they're coming uh, through the Bay Bridge border post in large numbers through buses. 
So we are not sure where the infection is really happening or whether it's actually happening in the quarantine centers. So I think a lot of work is now being channeled towards that to see where exactly um, the infections are coming from. And also like Nora has highlighted, because of the shortage is in testing, you find that maybe it will take long for maybe um, the returnees to be screened uh, or to be tested. So I think maybe that's what I would like to add. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Simba. Sandra, do you have anything to say? Okay, maybe just in terms of um, issues to do with risk communication. I think as a country, as Zimbabwe has tried to go a long way in terms of risk communication, but I think we're still lagging behind when it comes to really engaging the community as to what they should do and what they can do, what they're able to do so that uh, we can prevent the infections. And like uh, the other colleagues were talking about the retainees, we have uh, instances where people are running away from the quarantine facilities for, for different reasons. So we could be also looking at a potential risk of Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Sandra. Um, thank you so much for uh, the update, Zimbabwe. So um, let's move to, we have Mozambique. Tivani, I don't know if your network can let you say something, but if it can't, you could just type also in the chat function um, the challenges and uh, updates for Mozambique. Um, Namibia, Juliet, hello Juliet, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, great. Can we get updates from um, Namibia as well as um, challenges and gaps and also some experience sharing? Okay, um, yes, um, I, uh, at this moment in Namibia we have a uh, 31 um, confirmed cases of which 15 are active, uh, 16 recoveries, no deaths reported thus far. Uh, in terms of challenges, maybe um, echoing on what other people say, uh, okay, uh, in terms of people returning, uh, you might be aware that uh, when we bring our um, people, our citizens back from other countries, as soon as they enter, they go into quarantine for 14 days, mandatory quarantine by the by our government, of which they are mm -hmm. tested in day 12 and then tested again. But what we have um, also now um, enriched is that we, we test them as they enter the quarantine facility and again on day 12 before they are released. Uh, in terms of maybe just shortly challenges uh, at this moment, we are mostly experiencing challenges with the truck drivers that are coming in carrying essential goods uh, in terms of, uh, you know, where they are, where they were drivers. Some of them have escaped from the quarantine facilities. I heard some of the colleagues also mentioning that, but uh, we are having the uh, security cluster involved in the response in terms of um, providing security at those uh, quarantine facilities. Uh, so we are working on strengthening that. I also heard when you asked your question about how can we as a region overcome some of the challenges. So I guess some of the countries are also experiencing the same issue or might experience the same issue with the truck drivers. So as a proposal, I know that we've been having the cross-border border initiative for truck drivers for the HIV response. So I would want us as a region to look at how this um, initiative can be strengthened to provide the services necessary for our truck drivers. Uh, because uh, in some of the discussions, you know, WhatsApp groups and social media, some of the drivers have been complaining about the kind of treatment that they are giving. It's like, there's a stigma that is being attached to truck drivers as being, 
the carriers of uh, COVID-19. So I want us to demystify as a region and uh, just realize that um, the drivers are really in effect carrying essential goods and they are, can be classified as essential workers. If we can work out IEC material that can assist in educating our drivers because sometimes they might be doing some of these activities like running away, and so on out of fear or not knowing where they can get the necessary services, especially when they are expected to be in quarantine at a particular facility or place and then they might not have the services needed. So we can look at how we can make use of the cross-border initiatives for the HIV to mainstream this COVID response in there so that we can deliver proper services for our drivers. Thank you. Uh, I don't know whether there's something else that you would like me to mention. Uh, maybe if people have questions much later. I do have a question for you, but um, um, when we're done with your presentations, I, the questions can um, come. Um, next is uh, Zambia. Uh, Ms. Mazianga, could you give us a brief update from Zambia? Hello, Ms. Mazianga. Dr. Nyami, would you like to say something? Ms. Mazianga, she's on mute. So Dr. Nyami, would you like to? Okay, so while we wait for feedback from Zambia and uh, uh, Mozambique, if you have questions for Zimbabwe and Namibia, the floor is open for anyone who has questions based on what they have talked about. Questions? Uh, okay, Ms. Mazianga, can you hear me now? Yes, I can. I'm sorry. Uh, yes, I can. Um, so maybe a quick update um, on Zambia. We we have um, as of yesterday's um, statement, we have now a cumulative of one thousand. Um, let me just make sure I, I get it right before I, I mess up. Um, Okay. Yeah. So as of yesterday, we have a cumulative total of uh, 1235 cases in Zambia from different parts of the country. And um, out of those 1235, we have a recovery of 1020. And uh, we've um, a cumulative total of 10 deaths in the country, all with um, primary uh, other primary conditions which are known to be a risk to people with, um, who would get COVID-19. And then uh, we have, um, we had as of yesterday, 205 active cases. Um, so yesterday, the daily, um, uh, we had 32 new cases uh, confirmed yesterday. We've been doing, um, we have different types of surveillance. We have a, a routine surveillance where we follow contacts to known cases. But in some of the areas which we thought to be at high risk, we've also done uh, a community testing, uh, you know, in areas where we think there is a high risk, uh, particularly border towns, uh, the capital city. Uh, there was also, there's also a town called Kafir where we had a case which we, we're not sure what the link was, and so we did a community uh, uh, screening. Um, so this is ongoing, we, so we call that targeted um, screening and testing. And then we also have a health uh, facility surveillance where people with um, respiratory issues and, um, and uh, you know any signs and symptoms uh, uh, linking to COVID are tested, mm -hmm. and then we also have surveillance for our um, 
our our health uh, workers in the health facility and the other frontliners responding in the field. Um, uh, we 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 are using uh, the incident management system to coordinate our response. And uh, on this platform, we have, um, of course, uh, the government uh, um, officials, but also our partners. And um, this uh, setup has um, different um, uh, pillars. So we have the operation um, section, we have the planning section, logistics section, finance and administration. And above that, we have uh, the incident commander, uh, the field manager. The, the incident commander is also deputized. And we have a PR, uh, safety officer, and liaison. That is how our pillar is um, set up. Um, I think having said that, unless there are questions, that sort of sums up how we are responding in the country. Of course, we are doing a lot of training, capacity building in the areas of IPC. Uh, we are trying to, we are also pushing the risk communication and community engagement agenda. Uh, we have, in terms of communication, our president uh, giving us an address every two to three weeks. Uh, so what is happening now is that certain there's some easing on certain regulations. Uh, we didn't lock up our country, but uh, it was uh, there was restricted movement in terms of international travel, and then everybody who comes into the country is, is screened and tested and followed up uh, and uh, depending on the results of um, their test. Um, yeah, we've gotten uh, some good support. We got some good uh, amounts of reagents and um, uh, uh, consumables uh, uh, from Africa CDC, um, from Jack Ma through Africa CDC, and uh, we have um, through and then US CDC. We have also some support, technical support from the Africa CDC. We have, I think, three people now. Ezine, you have to correct me. Uh, everybody's wearing masks these days. Sometimes you are not sure who you are talking to. But um, yeah, I think we have three or four people who've come in through the Africa CDC to support us. And we also have uh, a number of our FETPs being supported uh, to give uh, uh, support to the response in the country, supported by the Africa CDC. We have a lot of support from WHO, uh, you know, the US CDC, Africa CDC, and a lot of local partners. Uh, if I start mentioning name one, one by one, I may forget some, some of the organizations, but we have a lot of local and um, international partners on board. Thank you, Ezine. Thank you very much, uh, Zambia, for the presentation. So the floor is open for questions and comments or additions to these uh, presentations from Zimbabwe, Zambia, and Namibia. We have lost um, Mozambique. So are there questions or comments from anyone or clarifications, especially on the issues of uh, that um, Juliet from Namibia raised on the cross-border initiative for um, truck drivers, what we can do since this is a, seems to be a regional problem, as well as uh, the people, the returnees from countries. So what do we have to say on this? What can we do? Well, maybe I can comment, Ezi, on that. Okay. Um, there have been a lot of regional meetings. So the SADC has been meeting, even as late as last week, um, to discuss this issue surrounding the issue of truck drivers. And also, of course, uh, versus the, the, the issues of economies, uh, because most of the countries, uh, 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 you know, require importation of, the, of stuff coming through their borders. So I think by next week we should have the position um, of the SADC 
in relation to, and I know that the RCC has also been meeting in terms of our policy level leadership in trying to decide how best to deal with the, the issue of um, balancing up between allowing these vehicles to pass through and how to deal with the, the truck drivers. But I do know that there's uh, most of the countries are in agreement that we need to have the truck drivers tested before they enter any country and certified. Uh, but it has not yet been concluded how exactly that will happen, but that's what it's pointing towards. I know for Zambia, for sure, we've been testing everybody who's been coming in and we have a quarter of the people who've, um, uh, you know, um, who've had been confirmed with COVID are actually around tra truck drivers. So, and we know that that's a problem um, uh, regionally. But um, I think it's beyond us technical people, it's more for policy level uh, to decide how to deal with it. But uh, maybe countries can give examples of how they've been dealing with it. For Zambia, we had a mandatory quarantine in our facilities. And only those who have essential goods will be allowed to in and out uh, um, as soon as they drop off their goods. But otherwise, uh, we had this uh, mandatory quarantine until we have results and, uh, and certify the person free to go. So right now, we have to escort the truck drivers to their destination and to their exit point. Um, yeah, so I guess uh, countries can give their specific uh, response to, to that situation. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Ms. Mazianga, for that from Zambia. Yeah. So does anyone have any other contribution on this, how their country has been dealing with this? or Because really it's a policy issue, and yes, I know SADAC has been, this has been discussed a lot with SADAC, and it's something that has to be taken up at that level for there to be any positive um, feedback or result. So are there any comments on these? Any suggestions or other things? Hello? Yes, Simba. So for, so for Zimbabwe, it has uh, recently issued a statutory instrument uh, with certain uh, guidelines uh, for these truck drivers for example, the, the need for maybe a valid screening test for from within like the past three days, uh, if they're coming from other countries, as well as if they are leaving the country. And also they are, they've been issued with a set of designated uh, stopping areas, maybe where they are in transit, uh, maybe if they are looking for ablution facilities or for food. And um, also they've been required to maintain, I think the issues of social distancing and not being, uh, uh, because they are, they are carrying passengers as well, you know, uh, within country and crossing the borders, given like the, the lockdown within the region. So um, they've also been uh, issued with, um, I think, heavy fines if they are found or maybe breaking some of these rules. So this is something that has since uh, recently been implemented in Zimbabwe. So I'm not sure if it will really work in trying to curb or reduce the number of infections uh, from these drivers. So off head, I think that's what I, I can say uh, concerning Zimbabwe and the issue of truck drivers. Over. Okay, thank you so much, Simba, for that from Zimbabwe. Um, any other comment from anyone? Question on this and other issues that have been raised today? Anyone? Hi, is your name? Okay, hi, Chica. So, um, thank, thank you, guys, for thank you for the presentations and the updates you have given so far. Um, I think the PACT initiative by Africa CDC um, regions or countries are expected to adopt or adapt um, what the initiative is all about, and then. Um, um, like um, what um, Mrs. Mashianga said, that um, that that, that um, I don't know, I can't remember what. But the point I'm trying to make is that um, whatever decisions um, the uh, whatever decisions that they arrive at the end of the day by the um, leader or the CDC uh, leader will uh, will also align with what the African CDC. 
um, Pact Initiative is all about. So about the truck drivers, it's, it's it, it definitely um, the initiative of making sure that they get test, tested before leaving or uh, coming into um, any country is very, very important. And it's one of the key um, message from the Pact um, Initiative. So um, hopefully um, countries will adapt from that um, initiative from Africa CDC. Then secondly, um, I would just want to use this opportunity to ask or to appeal to the focal points to kindly um, share the sex distributions from your countries um, because um, we still need to analyze um, the sex distribution to understand the um, the to understand why this um, perception out there about male being affected more than um, females. So we need to analyze for the southern region for, um, countries to see that um, probably it is true or it's just a slight difference or there is no um, myth um, behind that um, information making rounds. So um, I think that's all for me. Over to you, Zina. Okay. Thank you very much, Chika. Um, any other for that? Any other comment from anyone? Yeah, yeah. Would you like to talk about the the EBS? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, this is for Namibia. Yeah, okay. yeah. Can you hear me? Could you really like to talk about the EBS? Yes, so uh, currently we are following uh, two events in two countries, which is uh, Namibia and, and Zimbabwe. So in Zimbabwe, we are following up on the uh, on on malaria, and and in and in Namibia, we are following the hepatitis E, which has been there for a very uh, receiving citrus uh, for a very long time as well. So we also uh, pick up an event uh, which was reported in the Wahoo newsletter, in that's the West African Health Organization newsletter, uh, where they pick up a uh, uh, Crimean uh, Congo hemorrhagic fever, uh, CCHF, in Namibia. Though uh, it was not detailed about the about the disease or whatsoever, but uh, the EVS team will just want to find out uh, whether uh, and also with regard to the malaria, uh, we would want to we would want to get a sheet uh, about the situation of the malaria in Namibia uh, and in. Uh, and in uh, just to let the uh, our echo focal points to know, uh, currently sending an email. Uh, we want to get a database of uh, all the communicable diseases and their threshold. Whereas, it, when it reaches to a particular number of cases, then the country is able to declare that it's, a, it's an outbreak. So once we know, once we know that threshold, once we know that threshold uh, through the uh, EBS team. Uh, we'll be able to see how best to support in uh, that uh, way that okay um thank you yaya for that so namibia and uh, zimbabwe please um if you can i think he mentioned that for namibia he's trying to look at hepatitis e the crimean congo hemorrhagic fever malaria and Zimbabwe's malaria, typhoid, and anthrax. If you can please share um, any secret or just any document at all with us for us to be able to track this, because of course, I know the focus is on COVID now, but we also have to pay attention to other diseases that could be potential outbreaks. And um, that's it on that. Um, is there any other comment? 
There are a couple of documents I know that have been shared with focal points um, and we haven't gotten feedback on them from some countries. So the, uh, I know the IPC assessment, the risk communication, as well as, uh, like Chika mentioned, the request for aggregation of your COVID data. If you could please um, help us follow up with these. It's, things are very difficult now, yes, with the COVID and everyone is busy, but kindly just help us um, follow up with these um, uh, requests that we have made to the countries. Okay. So is there any other business? Anyone has anything else? We've gone through what we actually set out today to do. So is there any other question, contribution, or anything else we want to talk about before we wrap up? Because it's already 15. For me. Yeah, yeah, just uh, thank you very much for the um, questions or the issues raised by Yaya. Mm -hmm. uh, I just wanted to find out uh, in terms of the, um, the report or the information that is still outstanding. I know just to, to make sure uh, that I got it right. I, I heard set reps for hepatitis E, uh, the malaria and the Congo hemorrhagic fever. Yes. Uh, and then uh, you also wanted from us the sex distribution for our COVID-19 cases. Yes. I, I'm just asking for this clarification so that I can get it to the right people and then provide the necessary information as required. Is that correct? Those yes. Three? Yeah. Okay. But then there was something about the IPC assessment. Was that also something that was sent to the focal person? Yes. But Namibia has submitted... Namibia actually did that. So Namibia has submitted the IPC assessment that we sent to them. So they don't owe us that. Okay, thank you very much. I've noted. Right. Um, any other comment from anyone? Well, I want to ask a question. Is there any country that has drafted any um, sort of like recovery plan for COVID? Like a document for how the the whole country is ready for countries that um, maybe had some measures or shut down on one way or the other that are started drafting or has sort of like a recovery plan on opening up the economy and opening up the country. Is there Zimbabwe, Zambia, Namibia, do you have any document like this or are you working on any document like this? Sorry, um, I, I, are you asking for a recovery like a um, post-COVID plan? Yeah. We've worked on something like that? Yes. Do you have a plan of some sort? Yeah. Uh, as you know, um, our um, COVID-19, uh, the implementation or the stages at which we are, we have um, um, proposed four stages okay. of which we're in stage three now with um, lifting of some of the restrictions. Uh, the next stage, we will move into stage four of the COVID-19 uh, implementation plan. And as a country, we, we know that um, when we started with this um, response, there were different issues that we had to take uh, into consideration. So as um, uh, we have uh, nine pillars that we are operating through, and each of those pillars are working on a plan. I would just mention, for example, the psychosocial support um, pillar of ours, uh, the ones working with also the homeless uh, people. We have uh, gotten different sectors to work on a permanent kind of uh, um, solution because uh, when the outbreak started, we had to kind of, um, I can say, um, pull our people that were living on the street out of the street. Uh, get them to places a way of safety where we can take care of them. Uh, so some of those recovery or the post-COVID plans are already being discussed with the local authorities, the ministry responsible for urban and rural development, and so on. So, but I don't know um, 
the stage at which uh, all the pillars are with this post-COVID plan, but that is something that we are working on based on our um, standard operating procedures that we also have for each of the different pillars. So we are working on permanent or post-COVID, what we call the new normal. Yeah, so I don't know when we will be able to make that available, but it is a work in progress. Okay, great. So whenever it's available, kindly share with us, please. Uh, Zimbabwe and Zambia, are you working on anything like that or do you have any document like that? Uh, for Zimbabwe, we do have uh, a COVID uh, operational plan that has just been uh, completed. I'm yet to go through it. I'm not sure if it actually touches on issues of uh, post-COVID, but uh, there is some documentation that was, uh, that was uh, developed and it has just been approved. Okay, so can you get back to us? on this or share the documents, please, Nora. Sure. Thanks. Um, Zambia, do we have any document or plans like this that are being developed or already developed? Um, so for Zambia, um, in the contingency plan, we, we did factor in the issue of recovery, but um, I would say we're, it's still work in progress. Uh, we have to uh, give it more detail. Okay, okay, thank you. So please, anytime these uh, documents are completed, kindly share with us. I'll still follow up with you to remind you to please share these documents with us. Um, thank you so much. Is there any other question, comment from anyone? Because uh, we have nine minutes past our time. Sorry, just to assist, I think for Zimbabwe, we have the operational plan, but it doesn't speak about uh, post recovery. I think we are still in our acute phase and think we're still trying to, to manage the cases. So for now, there's no such a document, but I'm sure Nora can share the operational plan so that you can get uh, familiar with uh, our response. Thank you. Okay, that, that would be great. Thank you very much if Nora can share. Uh, that document. So uh, in absence of any other comments or questions, thank you everyone for um, joining us today and um, we'll meet again in two weeks and uh, before then I'll share the agenda for the uh, new meeting. So thank you so much for coming and have a lovely day ahead and a beautiful end of the week. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you.